a very warm welcome to all students of class 5th today we are going to start with chapter number 1 evolution of computers now first of all when we talk about evolution what comes to our mind evolution comes from the word evolve which means to develop means to be changed with time thus evolution means changing with time we as human beings have also evolved from apes just like us the computers have also evolved through various phases of development as you all can see the picture the human beings have evolved from apes the first picture is of an ape and the final picture is of a human being so as we can see man has evolved from apes so the correct answer for this question is the evolution of man now we talk about what is computer computer in a simple language is an electronic device that accepts data or the input and processes the data arithmetically or logically to produce information or output or we can say it is a device which can perform quick and very accurate calculations but these days computers can do more than that they have become indispensable with their abilities for a variety of functions there are many changes today in computers in their characteristics like size speed technology and appearance so if we talk about computer it is an electronic device that accepts the data or the instructions given in any form then it processes the data arithmetically or logically and then it produces the output or the information that is useful to us now we move further to the various early calculating devices during ancient times fingers stones and bones were used by people to perform calculations so some of the early calculating device are first is abacus then we have napier's bones then we have pascal and calculator difference engine and analytical engine so first of all we are going to talk about abacus abacus was the first calculating device which was invented by the chinese it was uh, made up of a wooden frame it also had rods and every rod had a specific number of beads it was the first calculating device ever used it helps merchant it helped the merchants and traders to count the products they sold or bought they also helped people to easily add subtract multiply or divide the next device is the napier's bone in 1617 john napier a scottish mathematician invented napier's bones this device was used for multiplication this device had rectangular rods which could be made of bone wood ivory or metal the numbers were written on these rods as we can see in the image the next device is the pascaline calculator in 1642 blaise pascal a french mathematician made the pascaline calculator it was basically a rectangular box with rotating wheels on which numbers were written it was mostly used for accounting the first pascaline computer calculator could perform calculations only up to 5 digit numbers but the later versions were able to perform calculations for 6 and 8 digit numbers also now we move further to the next device which is the difference engine in 1822 charles babbage an english mathematician developed the difference engine it could perform mathematical calculations automatically it was counted among the first automatic calculators next we have analytical engine it was quite similar to a simple computer system as it also had five units input output store mill and control for this contribution of charles babbage he is also known as the father of computer as we all know that charles babbage is the father of computer it is only because of this device after the invention of this device because it was much similar to a computer system as it also had five units like the computer system so charles babbage was known as the father of 
computer. Now, uh, we have this question given in your book. You have to identify and write the names of the pictures given below. Now we next move to the generations of computers. From a massive calculating machine to a much smaller, more effective and powerful machine, the computer has indeed evolved through the decades. After every few years, technology developed and the characteristics and features of computers transformed. Based upon these changes, the computers have been classified into different generations. Now, first we talk about the first generation computers. The first generation started from 1940 and ended till 1958. The first generation computers used vacuum tubes. The magnetic drums were used for memory. They were very large in size, often taking up an entire room. So the size of the computer was equal to the size of a room. They were very expensive to operate. They used a lot of electricity and generated a lot of heat, which was often the cause of malfunctions. The input was based on punch cards and paper tape. The two most popular examples of the first generation computing devices are UNIVAC and ENIAC. The first electronic computer was invented by J. Eckerd and J. Mockley. In 1946, ENIAC was invented, and in 1951, UNIVAC was invented. The full form of ENIAC is Electronic Numerical Integrator and Calculator, whereas UNIVAC means Universal Automatic Computer. Now we move to the second generation of the computers. The second generation started in 1959, and it ended till 1963. The second generation computers used transistors. The transistors replaced the vacuum tubes in these computers. Still, they generated a great deal of heat that subjected to the computer damage. For example, we have IBM 7000. The transistor was far superior to the vacuum tube, allowing computers to become smaller, faster, cheaper, and more energy efficient and reliable than the first generation computers. We have various examples of the second generations. After IBM 7000, we have IBM 1401, RCA 501, and Honeywell 200. And uh, there was another problem that they could be used only for selected purposes. And as we all know, they were very expensive. Now let's move to the next generation. Before that, we have another question given in the book. Color the clouds that contains the name of the first generation computer. So you have to color the clouds which contain the name of the first generation computers. Now let's move further to the third generation of the computers, which started from 1964 till 1970. So the third generation computers, instead of the transistors, integrated chips were used. An integrated chip is also referred to as an integrated circuit, if you can say, and it could house a large number of transistors. So an IC is also called as a chip. It could house, it contains a large number of transistors. And transistors were placed on the integrated circuits, a silicon chip semiconductor, which drastically increased the speed and efficiency of the computers. For example, we have IBM 360. Then the keyboards and monitors were also introduced. They were smaller. These computers were smaller and cheaper than their predecessors. Use, and they also used high level programming language. We have various examples ICL 1900, IBM 360, and Apple I. They were smaller, faster, and much more economical. They worked better and efficiently than the earlier computers. So they were also introduced to public for home use. This is a very important point that they were introduced to the public use because they were public friendly, people friendly. Now, next we move to the fourth generation computer. Before that, we have a question given on page number 14 of the book. You have to write the definition of integrated circuit with its full form. Now, next is the fourth generation computer, which started from 1971 and is going on currently also. The fourth generation computers used microprocessors. The microprocessor bought 
brought the fourth generation of computers as thousands of integrated circuits were built into a single silicon chip. We have an example of IBM 4341 as the most popular fourth generation computer. The computers could be linked together to form networks which eventually led to the development of the internet. Many high level languages were developed in the fourth generation such as COBOL, Fortran, BASIC, Pascal and C language. Then they were very small in size and they could even fit in the palm of the hand. So they were such small in size. We have various other examples like IBM PC, Apple Macintosh and HP 9000. Then we move to the fifth generation computers. These computers are based on artificial intelligence and they are still in development. Research is going on on these computers. They're expected to include many qualities such as voice recognition. They can recognize your voice and they can give input. You can give input in natural language and they are going to understand it and they are going to process your instructions. They will be able to recognize images and graphs. The goal of the fifth generation computing is to develop devices that respond to natural language input and are capable of learning and self-organization. If you talk about the artificial intelligence, it is a technology with not, which not only helps a computer to think like a human being, but also makes it do activities like a human, such as we all know voice recognition, decision making and translation of different types of languages. We also have robots as a very good example of the fifth generation computers. Robots have replaced people performing repetitive jobs and dangerous jobs such as bomb disposal. In the future, robots may also do household work and other jobs for us. Okay, so now let's, let's move to the next topic. That is the question answer. The different generations of the computers are there in this puzzle and you have to solve this puzzle. Okay, we have various keys given out there. Then we move to the types of computers. We have various types of computers that are being used on the basis of their performance and capacity. Majorly, the computers are of four types. First is microcomputer, then is mini computer, then we have mainframe computer, and the last one is the supercomputer. So based on their size and speed, this is the division of the computers. Now first, we talk about the supercomputers. A supercomputer is a computer that performs at or near the currently highest operational rate for computers. Traditionally, supercomputers have been used for scientific and engineering applications that must handle very large databases or do a great amount of computation or both. For example, we have Param and Prithvi. They are being also used for weather forecasting, earthquake studies, space, re space research and nuclear energy research. And one more fact I would like to tell you that India's first supercomputer was made in 1990 and its name was Param 8000. Okay. So this was all about the supercomputers. As you can see in the picture, they are actually super huge. Now next we move to the mainframe computers. Mainframe computers are computers used primarily by large organizations for critical applications such as bulk data processing, census, industry and consumer statistics, and enterprise resource planning, also transaction processing. These computers have the ability to process data with a very high speed and they're very costly also. For example, we have the IBM Z series. Then we have mini computers. When compared with the mainframe computers, these are less advanced on the basis of space and store, uh, sorry, speed and storage capacity. Mini computers are less costlier than mainframe computers. And so they find application in small businesses and firms. So basically we can say a mini computer is a computer which has all the features of a large size computer, but its size is smaller than a large size computer. It lies between the mainframe and the microcomputer because its size is smaller than the former one and larger than the latter one. Another uh, example of mini computer is PDP-2. Next we move to the microcomputers. 
the definition of a small personal computer with a microprocessor as a central processor is an example of a microcomputer a tiny little handheld computer similar to a smartphone that has a central microprocessor is also an example of a microcomputer they are smaller in size and are less costlier than other computers they are also popularly known as personal computers as their use is restricted to an individual or a family the microcomputers find application in general usage like uh, education office work and entertainment we have various companies that manufacture microcomputers like hp apple dell and ibm we have various types of microcomputers we can say a desktop computer is a microcomputer they are big and they can be placed in a desk or uh, as we can see in our school labs we have various desktop computers then we have laptops they are smaller in size than the desktop computers and they can be uh, kept on a person's lap and hence they are known as laptops then we have tablets and smartphones they are smaller when compared to laptops and are very easy to carry and are most popularly used these days so this was all about the types of computers now we have the various exercises given at the back of the book we have to complete another puzzle so i want you all to complete this puzzle based on whatever you have studied we have various hints given across and down so accordingly you have to fill the puzzle then we have the mcq the multiple choice questions please try to do these questions then we have the fill in the blanks you also have to do these fill in the blanks the hints are given in the box and you have to do these blanks then we have true and false which you have to do in your notebooks fill ups also you have to do in your notebooks then you have to do the match the following you have to match column a with column b that's it so these all questions you have to do in your notebook and thank you all for listening to me so patiently thank you